Andhra University has produced some of the world-class professionals who are working at various stages. Some of them have worked, some of them have retired, but at globally, Andhra University, in fact, has produced several world-class professionals. Sure. And in fact, this is the sixth edition of Andhra University Grand Alumni Meet. And I am so honored to have the Dean of Information Technology, the father of information technology that way, he is here in the midst of all of us. And uh, we are so lucky to have him here. I know that all of you are waiting to listen to some pearls of wisdom from him. And I have got uh, a couple of questions which are collected from the audience. Few questions from the students, few questions from the alumni, and few from the alumni association. Thank you, sir, for being here. Privilege. And uh, I'll start uh, the session with the first question from the alumni sitting over here. Mr. Murthy, education is always a tool for social transformation. Yeah. And in this connection, the alumni would like to know your thoughts on how education, especially the higher education, can create an impact on society. And how does an institution play a critical role in it, especially in the changing times? You know, education is about learning formal theory in the classroom, observe the reality around us, and solve problems. Let me give you a few, at least one example. Albert Einstein, he realized that the orbit of Mercury was not as it should be when you used Newton's law. So he started thinking, See, this is what I have learned in my uh, college at Zurich, but somehow this is not fitting in. That's how he came with his first special theory of relativity and then general theory of relativity. Similarly, Niels Bohr, he looked at the, the micro behavior or of atoms and even particles and he found that it was all probabilistic. It was not deterministic as we all thought. And that's how he started a new field called quantum mechanics. Now, without quantum mechanics, we would not have had lasers, we would not have had DVDs, and you name it, so many things we would not have had. If Einstein had not propounded his theory of relativity, our GPSs which you and I have on our mobile phones would have been off by seven miles. Similarly, PET scanners which help detect certain kinds of uh, problems in the body, they depend on Einstein's e equal to mc square. So the point I'm making is our education has to, at the very early stage, help our children understand the natural phenomenon around us. What is the meaning of saying the sun rises in the east? Why does the sun look orange or uh, red 
in the evening or in the morning whereas in the afternoon you don't see that color for sun why do the sound of car become fainter and fainter as i move away from or the car moves away from me in other words our children will have to be taught the theory behind the various natural phenomenon that they see and in the college they have to be encouraged to become more and more curious to do analytical thinking of any situation to see to to look at the society around them and solve problems of the society based on the problems so i'll i'll give you one example one of the very famous of uh, one of the richest techno entrepreneurs when he wanted to provide some kind of solution to clean water in africa he didn't come to our iits he didn't come to any indian university he went to caltech and the students of caltech and the professors of caltech they managed to find a method to produce absolutely clean water at a very cheap price so the point i'm making is around us we have so many problems right if our youngster sitting upstairs or encouraged to first observe that we have problems and then think about how they can use their physics chemistry biology whatever it is to solve some of those problems remember today when we went to that incubation center the question i asked was what problems have you solved it's all fine but what is the problem that you have solved so i would say that if we can orient our education towards first children becoming curious understanding the nature around us using whatever is taught in the classroom and later on looking at uh, using that education to solve problems around us and make our society a better society then it will be better i mean look at the tragedy here the everything that you see here has come from abroad that this mic this thing that i am using you are using has come from abroad those lights have come from abroad i mean you 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 name any the tv has come from abroad everything has come from abroad then what is it that we are doing how are we helping our children youngsters to solve problems and have the joy that is that to me is the value of education that's what i say. yeah it's really interesting sir because you know what i understand from your talk was that education at the same time trying to create some kind of a socratic kind of a mindset to the children is very important rather than believing in rot kind of a system absolutely and at the same time yeah. the children yeah. should be taught how to handle yeah. the yeah. societal uh, problems yeah. uh, right from their uh, you know uh, yeah. schooling yeah. Uh, level so that you know they yeah. can always apply their knowledge and uh, become richer at a later stage you know why one small suggestion particularly to the youngsters I don't know how many of you have watched a set of 12 YouTube videos called Justice. It's it's a set of 12 lectures by Professor Michael Sandel of Harvard University. He teaches justice as these 12 lectures. and that is where i'm glad you talked about socratic questioning he uses socratic questioning so well 
to make students think about issues. I think if we can convert our classrooms or you know you, you've done wonderful things in this university uh, if you can create start an experiment where one subject maybe that is not there for the exam I don't know whatever it is which will use Socratic questioning what that requires is you study at home whatever is going to be taught in the classroom today understand it a little bit then the students come to the class and in the class the teacher asks each student some deep questions I think if you can conduct an experiment like this you will be the first in the country no IIT has done nobody has done you will be the first in the country to have tried to have reversed the way that our children learn. Kindly think about it. Sure, sure, sir. And it's a wonderful Thank advice that you have given to the Andhra University. And, uh, you know, uh, the, as such, you look at uh, any of the institutions, yeah. right? The institution's uh, success is always uh, measured uh, in the form of uh, the positions and the influence that uh, their alumni, in fact, uh, reach. And as such, you know, Andhra University takes really a great pride because, you know, the alumni of the Andhra University, they have occupied uh, wonderful yeah. uh, positions. Yeah. And you are uh, one person, in fact, who traveled uh, across the globe and you must have seen several uh, practices in yeah. some of the world-class yeah. universities. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, can you share uh, some of your, you know, observations at these world-class universities and some of the best practices of uh, how an alumni can contribute to a country's welfare through the alma mater. You know, you made a very important, well, the first statement that you spoke in your speech was, nobody is as much concerned about a university as its alumni. Yeah. I have served on the board of several uh, universities in the US, you know, Cornell, Stanford, Wharton, many. University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, etc., etc., and in the in Europe also, in Japan, Tokyo University, all of that. What I find is about ninety percent of the members of the governing body are alumni. Awesome. There is no government fellow sitting there. Of course, if he is an alumnus, that's okay. And 10% are people who are not alumni but who have succeeded in some way in that field, in education field or in other fields etc. So my, my suggestion to you is that if you can invite your alumni who are very distinguished, I am not saying invite everybody, distinguished people, value based people to be on the board of your university, I think then, you yourself said, then their contribution will be fantastic. I tell you, when I became the chairman of I am Ahmedabad, you know, very interesting. I was the first person in the history of IAM, IAMA, to get 50% of the board position from the group of alumni and I was the first person again in the, in the whatever 30, 40 years of I am Ahmedabad to invite an alumnus to give the convocation speech. Nobody had thought of that. I said look what better way of honoring the alumni alumnus, what better way of exciting the youngsters than requesting him to, him or her to come and address the passing out graduates. So my, that is one thing that I have found. Okay. The second thing is that universities abroad 
they have the leaders they make projections on their five year plan what is it that they want to do in the next five years what do they want to achieve and what resources are needed how they are trying to get those resources and how that will impact the university etc so that's the second thing the third thing is a very good financial analysis of the uh, performance you know i was uh, very surprised when uh, i am on the bath i found that they were still using cash accounting now probably the whole country has changed i don't know i am talking of i used to be the chairman between 2002 and 2007 of i am on the bath i was surprised that here is number one management school in india and they were using cash accounting i said why are you using cash accounting because it doesn't make sense only petty business people use that so no government uses cash accounting then i said look what do you do for compliance i don't care but as far as this board is concerned i want to see accrual account so i think then in every meeting in every meeting the afternoon would be reserved for a lecture by the the dean of one of the schools or by a well known professor whether from physics or psychology or art history whatever it is on what all the new things they are doing in their field at the university in other words it was a way of letting the board know the progress that the university is making and second it's a way of honoring those people uh and then of course you have already done the other thing with uh, you know founder chairman like jim rao garo i think you have done you have a good job in alumni association so i don't need to say that so i think these are next you i think you have done this also already you have fostered relationship between universities in the us and europe and your university i think it's very very important because the best way to create enthusiasm amongst your youngsters is to get the youngsters from there come here these youngsters go there or professors from there come here for short periods professors from here go even if we can't afford professors from here to go at least if we can get professors from there come here it will be good i think these are some of the things we can do i mean there are many more but i don't want to take too much time yeah i have one uh, very interesting question to you sir yeah. uh, the current generation students they are opting only computer science engineering or information technology branches hmm. uh, in engineering yeah and what will happen if this trend becomes a norm because most of the premier institutions uh, they are finding it difficult in fact uh, to fill up their seats in traditional branches like civil mechanical chemical petrochemical marine engineering and uh, what kind of an advice can we give to the youth as well as to their parents because i don't know it could be the tyranny of uh, once again the coaching classes or a kind of a mindset from the parents so maybe your piece of advice would always add value to all these uh, Well, you know, we have to accept that we are a poor country. Whatever we may say, Mera Bhagwan, all of that is fine. But the reality is that the per capita GDP of India is about nineteen hundred dollars. It was likely less than Bangladesh, if you remember. In and if you look at the agricultural sector. about 45% of indians work in agriculture or related sectors and they just contribute only 15% of the 
of the GDP of the country. What that means is the per capita productivity in agriculture is one third of the Indian per capita GDP. That means six hundred dollars per year. That is hard less than two dollars per day. Now in such a situation, I don't blame the youngsters. If they want to make sure that they get reasonable jobs. Because parents borrow, parents make sacrifices because they want their children to have a better quality of life than they had. So I don't blame the children at all, youngsters. What we can do is, if the association of universities or AICTA or whatever institution it is or council of IITs, if they came together and then say, can we produce some extremely stunning videos of how I know, the, the, the world has benefited from you know, mechanical engineering, from electrical engineering, from civil engineering, from chemical engineering. Today, what has happened is we have all looked at it only from one dimension, which is job. I don't blame. But there are a lot of youngsters whose parents are not that poor. Therefore, they can take a little bit of risk. But we have to create enough incentive for those children to be attracted. Let me give you the example of my own brother-in-law. He got 17th rank in JE and he was a you know, science talent scholar and he took 5 year MSc in physics at IIT Delhi and he went and attended the summer school given by late Shanti, you know, late Shanti, uh, late, uh, what's his name, I forget the, not Shanti Swarup, the, the, the famous astronomer, I forget the name. He, he's, he died last year. He gave lectures on astronomy and a 16 and a half year old kid decided to take up astronomy. And of course, there is a very well known professor at Caltech, I mean, yeah, for whatever, 35 years. The point I'm making is, we the elders, in some way, have failed our future generation by not thinking about these problems. You see, you're, 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 you're one of those rare people who is thinking about these issues. But the entire association has to come, AICT has to uh, join, Council of IITs will have to join and produce five case studies on how mechanical engineering transformed the world, how aeronautics transformed the world, how chemical engineering transformed, etc. I think, you know, I think you will be in a position to do that. I have a last question to you, sir. Please. It is from the student community once again. Yeah. They are very happy, especially in the morning. Today morning you visited Andhra University College yeah. of Engineering and inaugurated uh, yeah. uh, a unique concept called uh, Dream Wall concept. And uh, on yeah. the wall, in fact, uh, we have uh, pasted uh, the most successful CEOs uh, for, uh, uh, across all the dimensions, yeah. basically to motivate uh, the youth and so that you know yeah. they dream yeah. big uh, and yeah. they can unfold uh, their own stories from the campus. Yeah. So now uh, the question uh, is that, you know, everybody really, uh, they have an aspiration to become a leader because leaders can always okay, contribute uh, uh, maximum uh, back to their countries and all. The question that is put by one of the students is that, uh, uh, are there uh, any leadership mantras that they can get uh, from you because you are the most successful uh, global leader and uh, they would like to listen to a few couple of mantras from you, sir, to be a successful leader. You know, before I say anything, I want to suggest to you whether you want to create incentive for these youngsters 
by putting the name of the top five ranks from this uh, from this university in mechanical engineering in front of at the entrance to the mechanical engineering department where every student will go through maybe their photo and a small uh, thing about what they did because that is going to enthuse some people to say I do want to be there I think if in addition that should in some way become the dream wall in every department I think kindly think about it now coming to your question leadership is about raising the aspiration of people leadership is about creating a grand vision and exhorting people to make the required sacrifice you know uh, put in required hard work all of that to achieve that goal Mahatma Gandhi was a great leader right he brought the whole country together for us to achieve independence. Now, I think it was uh, uh, George Bernard Shaw who said, most people see things as they are and wonder why. I dream of things that never are and then say why not. In other words, a leader imagines an aspirational vision and then he exhorts his people or her people to move towards that. So that is, that is one major aspect of leadership. Second of course, a leader as I spoke in my speech, a leader leads by example. That is the beauty of Mahatma Gandhi. I am a great admirer of Mahatma Gandhi because he taught the whole world the importance of leadership by example. And that you know is the most powerful way of, of uh, exhorting people to, to, to uh, follow values. You know, I, I think while introducing, they told me that they said that I am in the office 6, no, no, I am not 6, 6.20 in the morning because I would leave home at 6 o'clock and I would be in the office by 6.20. You know why I did that? Because every, the, 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 the story grows round very easily. When the vice chancellor, oh, he always comes 5 minutes ahead that story travels very fast and next time none of your professors will come late for a meeting called by you. You don't have to give big lectures. So I think our actions speak louder than words and our actions are seen as genuine because you come there, I mean, I mean, you also have same problems, you know, traffic is there, you, at home you have many issues to tackle, but you are there in the office, you know, or you are in the, the meeting ahead of anybody else. So I would request the youngsters to remember that the most powerful instrument they have for becoming leaders is leadership by example. Then I would say that discipline in this country is very low, very, very low. And that is not because of the children, not because of all the youngsters, it is because of us. us. I'm sorry, I will tell you a small story. How what we do every day is absorbed by the youngsters and they do. You know, there was a house 
there was a husband, wife, a small child, son and the grandfather that is husband's father. Somehow the wife did not like the grandfather, the, the uh, father-in-law. Every day she used to make life miserable for the husband saying, All right, why is this fellow at home, this, that, etc. So one day the husband got so tired, he was also, you know, he said, Okay, I will just get rid of him. Tomorrow morning I am going to the forest and I will bury him alive. Are you happy? She said, oh good, I will prepare some breakfast for you early and all of that. <laughs> so in the morning, he gets up early, the child also gets up, says, uh, where are you going? He says, I am going to the forest with my father. The child said, I am also coming. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So the three of them go to the forest and when they reach the middle of the forest, the father tells the child sit here and his father, the grandfather also, both of you sit here and he starts digging a hole, big hole. So the child goes and asks the father, why are you digging this hole? You know, we generally do not tell lies to children and children do not tell lies to us, therefore we do not tell lies. So the father was very honest, he said, you know, I want to bury my father, so therefore I am late. So he said that and he continued and after a little bit of time he found a, a few feet away the child was also digging a hole. <laughs> so this fellow, the father asked, kya kar rahe? what are you doing? Why are you digging this? He said, you want to bury your father, I want to bury my father. <laughs> So why I said that is, our youngsters are observing us very carefully. See what the everybody is observing you in your university. So every action of yours is observed, they want to imitate you, they also want to become vice chancellor at some stage. So therefore, I think you have a huge responsibility to conduct yourself properly and you have to think every one of your actions because you are a role model for whatever some 100,000 students of Andhra University. So I would say that the youngsters must realize that our, you know, you have to lead by example, our actions speak louder than words. And uh, finally, I, would say, I can go on because that is my favorite subject. Finally, I would say that there is nothing as important in life as respect from the society. Nothing is worth it. You know, I will tell you a small story again. I am sorry, I am I'm known to tell stories. Maha, you know, our Krishna Jodair was perhaps the best uh, Maharaja that probably India had and definitely that, that old Mysore had. But his brother was a little bit of an issue and there was a difference of opinion between I think Vishweshraya and him, that is what the story says, I do not know, I was not there at that time and Vishweshraya resigned. And after that about a couple of months later, I believe uh, the Viceroy wanted to beat the Maharaj and the Yuvaraja, so he had invited them. So the Maharaja, he himself was probably one of the extraordinary individuals, I mean 
one of the even at home we have his photograph and all of that because we we revere him he and his younger brother were sitting in the waiting room on this side and which vaishra had called vishweshraya so he had retired he was no more the divan and vishweshraya had also been called he was sitting that side the viceroy when he came to go to his room he entered the the ante chamber maharaja and his brother were on this side and vishweshraya was on this side he first looked at vishweshraya and he said come 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 please come then krishraj would have this is this is all apocryphal we nobody knows whether it's true or not but i believe then krishraj would have said look man this is the power of respect ah uh, you know this is maharaja he was a rich man he was a very powerful man vishwas is with nobody because he had resigned you know he was but the viceroy respected vishweshraya so the point i am making is remember that there is nothing in life more valuable than respect and that respect will only come if you are value based you know even today even today whenever i think of values i think of my high school headmaster k v narayan he was our chemistry teacher and it was 1961 61 years ago and while doing chemistry that day the experiment he did he showed us required common salt sodium chloride so he had brought some small sodium chloride from the laboratory and he was being very careful about putting a small spoon of sodium chloride into the test tube i had a i used to sit in the front bench and next to me was a friend of mine classmate of mine he is he burst out laughing so mr kevin arain stopped his experiment and he came and said Hey man, why did you laugh? What was so funny about it? And you know, children are generally honest. He said, "Sir, I laughed because you were so stingy with that common salt, which is so cheap." And what he said that day has formed the most important lesson that I have followed in my Infosys years also. he said hang man this salt belongs to this school it belongs to you it belongs to me it belongs to this class it belongs to other class belongs to all the teachers etc this is community property therefore i have to treat it with utmost respect and he said this class will be over at 5 pm come to my house and i will give you a big glass a big glass jar full of uh, salt free because that's my personal property i can be totally uh, generous with my personal property but i cannot waste even one grain of community property that is that principle is is something that i have followed in my entire life he didn't give a big lecture on he do not do this is not nothing we all observed what he did and that's it so i would say that uh, observe your teachers the lot of good things that their actions will tell you and internalize it make it part of your dna and you will be very good quality uh, citizens that's what i mean i can go on and on but that's but we all thank you so much uh, mr murthy in fact you know simple living and high thinking that's the philosophy that in fact you have demonstrated to all the 
youth as well as uh, to the generation of uh, uh, the Indians. And we are so glad to have you here in the precincts of the university and uh, giving the pearls of your wisdom. We will surely incorporate uh, the suggestions that are given by you into the philosophy of uh, Andhra University. Yeah. I am so thankful to you, to you sir. And to conclude uh, the session, I would uh, simply say one single line that you made the entire hall in the audience to go wise. <laughs> Thank you.